Welcome to our machine learning project prediction. Today, we are going to train our model. After we've done processing and preparing our data and our features for our modeling, we've come to this very exciting part of our project. Before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free data science courses for you guys. We do have mastering machine learning algorithm, deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Please don't forget to click the notification icon for you to be notified every time we have a new lesson. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. So let's get right into our job. So before we continue to our main job today, let's first have a review of the steps that we have undertaken so far. So the first thing that we did was we created our environment, then we read our data, and then also we studied our data structure and we did the data cleaning by identifying the null values. And with that, we also studied the numerical distribution of our data. And then we identified the correlation values of our different features. And then we also dealt with the outliers in our data. And this part is actually very interesting because those values which are considered statistically as outliers were retained by us for a very important reason. And then also we added features and we tweeted them. Speaking of these features, we've considered hour, the weekday, the week, and also monthly, and a lot of things too. And also, we pointed out our expectation, and that is, there is a correlation between the temperature and humidity and the energy load. And we also processed and examined closely our new features. The very last thing that we did was we identified the linear relationship of our features. So today, we are going to train the model on our data. So let's get into this. And of course, we're going to add cells. So let's insert cells below. And we have here already a lot. Okay, now. So if you could still remember, we've identified the low consumption and the high consumption in our data set. So if you could still remember, we categorized that by hour and 30 minutes. And with that, for us to be able to train our model, we first have to transform these categorical variables into dummy ones. So this is what we'll do. So this one will give us the dummy variables for the hour and the 30 minutes. All right, so let's run this. So we have already transformed these variables. These two qualitative variables are low consumption and also the high consumption. And these two variables are actually in addition to those variables where we have identified their correlation with our log appliances. And of course, we are not going to use all of these features as our variables for training our model. So we will just choose those variables or features that show high correlation. So with that, we're going to do this one. So we have chosen, of course, the low consumption and the high consumption. And then we have the hour. Then we have the T6. Then we have the RH6. We have the lights. And of course, we have the wind speed for our modeling. And maybe you would like to ask me, what is our light here? What is T6 R86 here? So if you could still remember before, we did the additive assumption. And this additive assumption is the thing that we have to avoid, if not to lessen its effect. So let me go back to that part of our project wherein we did that, right? So in this part of our project, we removed the additive assumptions for the reason that we could not actually say that hour has nothing to do with lights and T3 has nothing to do with RH3 because in fact, there's an interaction between them. Although RH3 is an independent feature or variable and also T3. But then, as mentioned, that there is always an interaction between them. So with that interaction, we have to always show that in our model. And so because of this kind of assumption of interaction, 
we've included the interaction between the hour and the lights because again hour is here and also light is here and also we have included the interaction between the t6 and the r86 right but actually if we are going to make a data science project in this part of our work we are going to test different models so for example we could use here the support of vector regression and also we could have the random forest models for the training but then again because we are just considering here a linear regression we are just showing you how we model or train the model which is linear regression in our data in our future project we're going to show how we do all of these things but for now let's just focus on linear regression so we are ready to run this and let's do this before we go to our train and test set we first have to avoid warnings from our standard scaler because that's actually an eyesore so that's as far as i am concerned so what we'll do is that we're going first to avoid these warnings of standard scaler and this is what we'll do so the warning will be avoided by doing these things and what we will do is now we are ready to go to the training and testing sets so of course the standard size for the test set is the 20 percent of our data set and of course for our train set it would be the 80 percent so let's run this so that we could proceed to our next step okay so we have already created our test set and our train set and the next thing that we're going to do is now we're going to standardize and of course i don't need to explain the process of standardization we have already that in our machine learning algorithm and deep learning mathematics so if i were you please study and go back to these videos because this really give you the proper foundation for you to be able to properly understand why we do this one why we do this standardization for us to be able to do the standardization let's do this one first let's import some things okay so before we run this code i would like to first point out that standard decision is done after we have already normalized our data so if you could still remember in our past lessons in this project we did the normalization of our data set doing the standardization assumes that our data is already normalized and maybe you would like to ask me does it have to be always like that wherein we always first normalize our data before we standardize it actually the answer is no but here is the take standardization is very effective when our data is normalized so there you go you have the most important key point in doing your data science project so let's run this and the next thing that we are going to do after we have already standardized our data is we're going now to train our model of course we have here the different hyperparameters to consider so let's have this one so now we are ready to run this so there you go guys we have already trained our model on our data and this has been a very exciting part of our lesson and we have learned how to transform our variables into dummies we have identified what these features to be considered for our linear model then we considered identifying our testing set and our training set and we standardized our values or our data and then lastly we train our model with default parameters do you want to know more about this channel just click the card on your screens because we do have a lot of amazing free data science lessons for all of you we do have mastering machine learning algorithm the deep learning mathematics the different data science algorithms the data science tips and a lot more here you can always learn and upskill for free